Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about this particular reaction. And I am willing to bet that you are not going to guess the correct answer right away, but let's talk about this reaction and see what's going on here. So the first thing that is jumping at me here right away is that I have two different functional groups in my starting material. I have an alcohol functional group and I have an alkene. So the question is, which of those two functional groups my HBr is going to react? with. And in cases like that, we are going to draw both possible intermediates and brainstorm from there. Remember, molecules do not have long-term planning skills, so the only thing that we can do is basically analyze one step at a time and see where it's taking us. So, if I first protonate my oxygen like this, then I'm going to get a protonated uh, species that's going to look like that. If, on contrary, I'm going to look at my bottom reaction, and in that case I'm going to use the proton on my double bond, so I'm going to do the electrophilic addition to my alkene, then in this case I'm going to get a carbocation. And since both sides of my double bond are the same, I can get a carbocation that looks like this, or I can get a carbocation that looks like that. And in both cases, both of those are secondary carbocations, so there is no difference, that's why I get both of those carbocations. Now, when I'm analyzing uh, both of those types of intermediates, one thing that jumps at me immediately is that I have two carbocations, which are six electron species over the species with a plus on the oxygen with an extra proton on the oxygen, and that one has a full octet around that. From the stability perspective, a protonated oxygen is going to be way more stable than a carbocation, which means that the first step on the top reaction is going to be way more favorable than the formation of the carbocation. So let's keep that one and get rid of our carbocations for right now. Now, if I'm going this direction, the next most logical step here for me is going to be the living group dissociation. This H2O over here that I have sitting on my molecule is an excellent living group, so I can have a living group dissociation, or loss of a living group if you like, giving me a carbocation that looks like this. Now, this carbocation is a tertiary carbocation, so it's somewhat stable, and on top of that it's not just tertiary, but it is also allylic, which means that we can have resonance stabilization here. And if I wanted to draw my other resonance structure here, then I'm going to show the electron movement with the pi electrons going towards my carbocation like that, giving me the following carbocation. Now, I'm going to get rid of my curved arrow that I used for the resonance because I don't really need that anymore, but from this point I have two electrophilic positions in my uh, molecule. I have this electrophilic position and I have that electrophilic position. So my Br- minus that I have formed on the first step can potentially attack either of those. So I'm going to show that Br- is going to be attacking either over here, or I can say that my Br- is going to be attacking right down there. And that means that we can potentially make two different products. In the first case, my nucleophilic attack is going to produce me this tertiary alkyl halide, and in the bottom case, we are going to make this secondary alkyl halide. And of course, in both cases, we did form a chiral carbon over here, so technically we are going to form a pair of enantiomers for each of those, but I'm not going to show them at the moment. Now, when we can choose which type of a product we are going to get, typically we are going to opt for the more thermodynamically stable product. In this particular case, or in cases like that in general, what we are going to look at is the structure of our double bond and how many different substituents we have sitting on our double bond. In the first case, my double bond has two substituents. In the second case, my double bond has one, two, three different substituents, which means that my bottom case, my molecule on the bottom of this page, is more thermodynamically stable, which means in a reaction like that we are going to opt for that specific double bond, making this molecule, or rather I should say the pair of enantiomers here, so I will add that this is a racemic mixture, so this pair of enantiomers, this racemic mixture is going to be our major product in this reaction. Did you guess it correctly, or did you go after the double bond right away? Let me know in the comments below. Also. If you like this video, give it a like so YouTube promotes it and more students will see it. Leave me your questions and feedback in the comments below. Subscribe for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.